everyone and welcome back to Sister's Keeper. I'm Anu. Over the past few weeks, the media has been agog with different stories of love gone wrong with serious consequences. In the first story, a lady went to a shopping mall and ran into her husband with another lady. She tried using her car to block her husband's car, but he was able to maneuver his way through and sped off with his lady friend in the passenger seat. Mrs. X put her 007 skills into action and chased after them. Unfortunately, she lost control of her car during the chase and had an accident. She died on the way to the hospital, leaving behind three young sons. Stories emerging show that the couple have had issues for a long time, as Mr. X is controlling. In the second story, another lady saw her husband out driving with his lady friend riding shotgun. She chased after them. She overtook them, blocked his car with hers, then came out and slapped the passenger hard. The aggrieved lady lifted Mrs. Y in the air and slammed her hard on the tarred road as if they were in a wrestling match. I'm unable to confirm the extent of the lady's injuries at the time, but sources advised that she was hospitalized as a result of the body slam. In the third story, another woman caught her husband in an uncompromising situation. She acted as if she had put it all behind her after her husband pleaded with her to forgive him. She later set her husband ablaze. Mrs. Z's children are now fatherless. Looking at these three scenarios, the first thought that might come to mind is infidelity and what it drives hurting partners to do. Hurt people don't just hurt the people who hurt them, they hurt everyone else, including themselves. While it's very hurtful to find out that your spouse or partner has not been faithful, where do we draw the line in terms of our reactions? Which reactions are healthy and which are unhealthy? Have the extreme and unhealthy reactions become the norm? What do these reactions say about the state of our mental health? What is possession? Here's what the doctors say. According to WebMD, in an article on signs of possession in sex and relationships dated 3rd December 2020, we almost all feel some degree of possessiveness in romantic relationships. But if taken too far, possessiveness can become a serious issue that leads to other relationship problems. Among them include jealousy, abuse, paranoia or stalking. It's important to recognize the signs of possessiveness in a relationship and know when it's taking a bad turn. Possessiveness is fundamentally a fear of loss. Possessive people worry that their partners will leave them. Possessiveness can also be a sign of borderline personality disorder. People with this disorder often have mood swings. They exhibit extreme possessiveness in an effort to avoid perceived abandonment. As an advocate of avoiding stories that touch the heart, here's one warning sign to look out for. If your partner is possessive, they may want you to spend all of your free time with them, but you need to foster healthy relationships with friends and family, not just your romantic partner. When your partner interferes with those bonds by wanting you to spend time only with them, it may isolate you or jeopardize other relationships. Let's talk about dealing with possessiveness. Navigating possessiveness in a relationship can be tricky. However, there are ways to handle the situation, whether you're in a relationship with someone who is overly possessive or if you yourself are too dominating in a relationship. How to deal with a possessive partner. If you recognize signs of possessiveness in your partner, you should understand it's not about you. Their possessiveness is about their issues, whether it's insecurity, attachment anxiety, or a possible personality disorder. You can reassure your partner about your love for them and the state of your relationship. If their possessiveness hasn't crossed the line into abuse, this may be enough to reassure them about the stability of your relationship. If reassuring your partner doesn't help with possessiveness, therapy may be the next step. This may help them with issues from their past. You may both 
benefit from couples counseling. How to deal with your possessiveness. If you're the possessive one in a relationship, here are some things you can do to deal with your own fear of loss. Avoid snooping or situations that lead to unjustified suspicions. Talk calmly to your partner about your feelings. Maintain relationships with people other than your partner. Seek a therapist's help with feelings of insecurity. Remember that mental health checks are just as important as any other health check. If you feel that there's something out of place or you're constantly tired and have lost interest in the things that once excited or energized you, I encourage you to make that appointment to see a therapist today. Don't suffer in silence. And that wraps up our time together today. There's something new coming next. Subscribe to ensure you don't miss it. Thank you for listening. Remember to be your sister's keeper. If you found this video useful, please subscribe, share, like, and then leave a comment in the comment section below. Contact us via our socials at sisterskeeper42 and email sisterskeeper42 at gmail.com. Take good care of yourself and I look forward to talking to you soon.